Almost exactly a year ago, I decided to get rid of all of my Fuji equipment and buy a full frame Sony camera. Admittedly, not out of necessity, I was indeed very happy with my Fuji cameras, with just a few minor issues here and there, but to be honest, I just wanted to finally find out what the hype is all about, and more importantly, I finally wanted to know what it's like to own and use a proper full frame mirrorless interchangeable lens system. I always had a passion for cameras, but it wasn't until I bought my first DSLR back when I was still in university in my early 20s that I really got into the hobby. A big part of what inspired me to actually go out and buy a DSLR in the first place was of course social media with platforms like Instagram being in what I would consider to be their prime at the time and also seeing influencers like Ben Brown and others going on adventures with their Canon 5D Mark III's and getting all of those great shots. Now back then I certainly could not afford a full frame camera not even close. So my first DSLR was a Canon 1000D, which I later managed to replace with a Canon 70D. And you know, at the time, that Canon 70D was already a huge financial investment for me. And it was also totally worth it, not in the sense that I made any money off of it, because I didn't and I wasn't even trying to, but because it allowed me to just capture so many great memories that I still hold on to and I wouldn't want to miss them for the world. So overall, no regrets. But what kind of bugged me, and I know that this will sound kind of ridiculous to a lot of people out there, but back in the day, it kind of always bugged me that I sort of had to make do with just an APS-C camera and that I wasn't able to get a full frame camera because that seemed to be the goal at the end of the day. So having to deal with an APS-C camera felt almost kind of like a disadvantage or like I wasn't getting everything out of my images that I could get out of my images. I mean, after all, 35 millimeter film stock or what we would now consider a full frame has been the go-to film size for the longest time. And you always sort of get reminded of that because when you're buying a lens for your APS-C camera, you're always thinking about full frame equivalents, or at least I was. So when I was getting a 16 millimeter lens, I wasn't doing that because I wanted to have a 16 millimeter focal length. It was because I wanted to have a 24 millimeter full frame equivalent. So what I'm trying to say is that there's always that reminder that you're working with something that is kind of wrong. And perhaps a chip on your shoulder, at least for me, that might be inferior to what you probably actually want to use. And therefore, you know, I was always just kind of curious to find out how big the difference between APS-C and full frame actually is. Anyway, I later decided to switch from Canon to Fuji because at the time, circa 2018, Canon seemed to have just abandoned their APS-C customers and left them for dead because they refused to release a camera that could actually shoot 4K video without a crop, especially in the APS-C segment. And so I made the jump over to Fuji and bought a Fuji X-T30 alongside a Fuji X100F. Fast forward a bit, and I had also bought a Fuji X-T4, at the time Fuji's flagship camera, along with a few solid prime lenses. Now while I loved the X-T30, with all of its charm, good looks and character built into such a compact little camera, the X-T4 was a real game changer for me. Not only did it look and feel like a much more substantial camera, but finally having IBIS really allowed me to take full advantage of those prime lenses. Especially when shooting handheld. And I cannot even begin to tell you how happy I was with the results. My three favorite lenses for my X-T4 were the Fuji 16mm f1.4, hands down probably one of the best lenses that I've ever used, and also the 13mm and 56mm f1.4 primes by Viltrox. I also started shooting my videos in F-Log with the X-T4 because of those juicy 10-bit files. And yeah, all of this combined just allowed me to get some really lovely photos and videos, if I do say so myself. It wasn't all perfect though. The autofocus in video mode had a tendency to hunt every now and then, even though in my opinion it's nowhere near as bad as some folks on this platform make it out to be. Also, if you leave the camera in auto exposure in video mode, it will always make some kinds of adjustments to the light and to the brightness of your image, even though the conditions might not change at all. 
And my biggest gripe, the IBIS had that really bad warping effect when using wider lenses like my Viltrox 13mm Prime handheld for video. In terms of low light performance, the X-T4 with its IBIS was already so much better than anything that I'd experienced prior because again, it really unleashed those primes. But still, if it got dark enough, there was still a lot of noise going on. That rarely ever bothered me though, mostly because of the overall very film-like look of the photos and videos that you get out of the Fuji. So the high ISO noise just looked a bit like, you know, film grain. But truth be told, that little chip on my shoulder that I had from years ago back in university when I wasn't able to afford a full frame camera was still there and still nagging me. And so a year ago then, I had some cash on the side and Sony was running their usual Christmas sales and I decided to go for it. And so I bought a Sony a7 IV along with a couple of lenses. In terms of the camera's capabilities and stats, it's fairly close to what I was used to with my Fuji X-C4. So it could shoot 4K 10-bit video, 4K 60 with a crop, 120 FPS in 1080, has IBIS and a flip screen, two SD card slots and so on. The main difference this time around being that it's a Sony, has a higher megapixel sensor and most importantly, it is a full frame camera. Mind you, this is not my first ever full-frame camera because I actually bought a Leica Q2 about two years ago and it is to this day my favorite EDC camera, but the a7 IV is in fact my first full-frame camera with interchangeable lenses. So with all of that out of the way, with thousands of euros wiped off of my bank account, was it worth it? Well, I'm honestly not quite sure. There's a bit of nuance here, so let me explain. So what I expected or what I wanted to get out of my Sony camera was noticeable better image quality, both in photos and in videos, better low light performance, better video autofocus, better IBIS, especially with wider lenses, more dynamic range, sharper images, and more bokeh, especially when shooting with wider lenses. And I would say that for the most part, my expectations were actually met. But mind you, I haven't actually done any scientific testing. This is very much just based on my very vague personal perception. But in terms of dynamic range and overall image quality, I actually think that there's not as much of a difference as I would have thought. And that is especially true when we're talking about videos. Fuji's F-Log files behave very different compared to Sony's S-Log files. And I have to overexpose the living shit out of my Sony to get the results that I want, while my exposure compensation was always set to zero on my X-T4. But what I can say with a fairly high degree of certainty is that A, the low light performance of the A7 IV is way better than that of the X-T4 and I also no longer have any issues with IBIS wobbles when filming handheld with wider lenses. And yeah, when we are talking about bokeh, it honestly doesn't make the biggest difference with longer focal length, but it's certainly a different story when we are talking about wide angle lenses. While I loved my 13 and 16 mm f1.4 prime lenses on the Fuji, and I do think that these are just about the closest you could get to a full frame look on an APS-C camera, they are still no match for something like this majestic 24mm f1.4 G Master for the Sony. So you could say that in terms of sheer capabilities, the upgrade experiment was a success. Well, you could also argue that I don't need all of those capabilities and that the difference in image quality and such will not make my photos any better or my videos any more interesting. And you would absolutely be right in saying that, but obviously that was not the point. Uh, this experiment was just to, well, tame my curiosity about what the difference would be like to actually have and use a full frame camera and also a bit, to be honest, to fight that inferiority complex of just having an APS-C camera. So in essence, I guess you could say that I had fallen prey to the great marketing of camera manufacturers, but yeah, at least I had gotten a great and very capable camera out of it. So all is good and well, right? But it's not like there are no negatives to this. So firstly, one thing that I've honestly not appreciated enough while I still had my Fuji X-T4 is the shutter sound that it made. Because the shutter sound of the X-T4 is fairly silent and somehow just very pleasant and high quality overall. Now again, this rarely ever mattered to me, but in 2023, I got to shoot two weddings for friends. I'm not doing this professionally, 
but when I was shooting those weddings I really understood why having a silent shutter sound would actually be beneficial and the shutter sound of the Sony a7 IV just sounds kind of terrible especially in a setting like this. Now you could obviously just use the electronic shutter and with that the a7 IV would be completely silent but I kind of do like to have a shutter sound because it gives me that reassuring feedback that I have actually just taken a shot. So yeah, I would much prefer to have the shutter sound of the X-T4 back. But anyway, that's of course not the main issue. The main issue is this. While I do have huge respect for the capabilities of my Sony a7 IV, I simply do not have the same passion, for lack of a better word, for it that I had for my Fuji X-T4. You see, the Fuji X-T4 was not only extremely capable as a camera, but it was also just a very beautiful and nice tool to behold. I absolutely loved the old school design and layout, but I also love how Fuji managed to give you all the dials and buttons you need to maintain modern usability. It's really the perfect blend of old and new. The Sony, on the other hand, is just a tool. There is nothing wrong with that, of course, but to me it comes off kind of soulless. I have almost never felt an urge to just grab it and go out and shoot the way I did with my X-T4. It's just not inspiring, for lack of a better word. So I usually just grab my Leica Q2 and only use my A7 IV when I want to shoot something very specific and the Leica just can't do it. So while my S7 IV is actually my workhorse camera that I use for these videos primarily, it almost never leaves the house. Also, and you probably will have heard this if you've watched one of my videos about switching from the Fuji X100V to the Leica Q2, shooting with a Fuji camera just is more fun in general. And a huge part of that, in my opinion, is because you get more of an instant gratification when you're shooting with a Fuji camera. And that is at least in part also down to Fuji's color science and the ability to create custom JPEG recipes. In essence, you get a customizable Fuji preset slapped onto every image you take, which makes it look great the second you have taken it and look at it on the back of your camera. Whereas with the Sony, or the Leica for that matter, you get a fairly boring, flat and more natural image, which then has to be edited in post to really make it pop. Obviously, editing your photos in Lightroom can still yield great or probably even better results. And me personally, I have simply gone back to editing all of my photos in Lightroom and that's fine. But again, it just lacks that sort of instant gratification that you get with a Fuji camera. And yes, of course, that is not a big problem with the camera. That is more of a me problem, but it is what it is. With that being said though, the Sony just has started to win me over more and more with just how insanely capable it is as a tool. And you know, part of me thinks that this is probably just what I needed because with the Sony, you kind of lose the fashion aspect of having a camera. It's just not a good looking object, but it really focuses in on what matters most, I guess, which is getting the shot. And it's very, very good at that. So yeah, who can tell what's more important? The process of taking a photo or actually getting the results, who can tell? Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. In conclusion, I would say that overall, I'm very happy that I made the jump from Fuji to Sony. Not necessarily because the Sony provides a lot of things that the Fuji simply wasn't capable of or because I needed to have the Sony or a full frame camera in any way, but because A, it is very nice to have all of those capabilities and B, I've finally been able to quiet that nagging voice in my head that just wanted to know what it's like to shoot with a full frame camera. With that being said, would I make the jump again knowing what I know now? Probably not, honestly. I mean, it's certainly nice to have the Sony a7 IV and again, the a7 IV is also certainly the more capable camera, but you also just miss out on a few aspects. However, with that being said, I'm also not planning to go back to Fuji for the simple reason that I would have to sell all of my Sony gear and then rebuy all of my Fuji gear, which I have just sold for a loss. That would just be financially 
So yeah, I think I will just stay in the Fuji ecosystem for a while, which also has other benefits that I haven't even talked about, like the ability to use that plug and play hot shoe, which allows you to plug in an external microphone without having to deal with any sorts of cables. Um, so it's just a very streamlined and sensible system overall. So those are my thoughts on switching from Fuji to Sony. I'm not exactly sure what we've learned today, but I hope this was still somewhat interesting to you. If it was, don't forget to give this video a like, subscribe if you want to see more and take care. Till next time, bye.